All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lesson 27, taking a little bit of a different approach and talking about reading scales. So see what we have going on. So we remember number lines, right? Here's a little new twist. They can be horizontal like we've always seen. They could be vertical or even curved. Some number lines might only mark certain numbers. The location of unmarked numbers has to be figured out, and that's where your math skills come into play. So if you needed to find the numbers of an unmarked number line, find the difference, the answer when you subtract, of Two of the closest numbers, and remember the largest number has to go on top, right? So two of the closest numbers, you wouldn't go 400 minus 0, you would use 200 and 400. Can we do this mentally in our head? What is 400 minus 200? Boy, we better be able to. 2 400 minus 200 is 200, right? And then you have to divide that difference by the number of unit segments to find out how much each tick mark is worth. Remember, unit segments is the space. So there's one unit segment, two segments, three unit segments, four unit segments, right? So I'm going to take my 200. And I want to divide by the number of unit segments to find out which each tick mark is worth. Let's divide into 20. 4 times what gets me close to 20? Hey, that's 5. Multiply it back for 20. Subtract it for 0. Bring down another 0. 4 divides into 0. 4 times what is 0? Why, that's zero multiplies back for zero and it also subtracts for zero so it has no remainder each tick mark is worth 50 so there's 50 and we're just going to count up by 50s now like we do in mental math right and another 50 is 100 and another 50 is 150 let's go and bring it over to the other side plus another 50 is 200 plus another 50 is 250. So again, find the difference of the two closest numbers. Remember to put the largest number on top. Divide by the number of unit segments, and that will tell you which each tick mark is worth. That's why we practice all those counting activities. So let's try this guy. This is kind of a curved number line representing a scale. So let's go with two of the closest numbers. Here I have 800 minus 400. Well, hey, that should give us 400, right? Divide that by the number of unit segments. How many unit segments do I have here? There is one unit segment. And there is two unit segments, so I'm dividing by two. Do I even need to do this? I'm hoping we know 400 divided by two. That's just half of 400, right? That'll be 200. You could go and do all the division algorithm if you want. So what is the scale pointing to if each tick mark is worth 200? Well, let's count up by 200s. 400 plus another 200, that sounds like 600 to me, right? That shouldn't be too tough. Let's make it a little bit more. So you'll see problems like this. What number is shown on the scale? Subtract two of the closest numbers, 200 minus 100. Can you do it in your head, or do I need to show off my fancy new pen here? 200 minus 100, I'm hoping you know, should give you 100, right? So I'm going to take my 100, and I'm going to divide it by the number of unit segments. Here I have 1, 2, 
three, four, right? I have four unit segments between numbers. So this becomes a division algorithm problem. I have a hundred between four spaces. So each space is going to be what? Can we do this one in our head if we thought of it as money? If you had a dollar and you were going to share it with each person, everybody would get 25, right? So now it's just a matter of counting by 25s. Well, a hundred's already labeled for us. A hundred plus 25 more, that's got to give us 125, doesn't it? Not too tough. Let's keep going on. Points A and B represent two numbers. Write the two numbers and use a comparison symbol. Remember, greater than, less than, or equal to, right? To show which is greater and which is less. So here's 0 and here's 50. Boy, that's an easy subtraction problem to find that difference. 50 minus 0 is going to be 50. Divide by the number of unit segments between two numbers. I have three, four, five. I have to find out which each one of my tick marks are worth. So I'm going to take 50, the difference between the two numbers, divide it by the number of unit segments. Five times what gives me 50? That one's not too tough. That should be. 10. So now let's think. If this is 0 and each line is worth 10, here's 10, here's 20. So our first number up is 30. I'm going to write him over here. Going to keep counting. Plus 10 more, that gives me 40. Plus 10 more is 50, and here is letter B sitting right here at 60. So I have 30 for A, I have 60 for B, and it said you write them using a comparison symbol. Crocodile's mouth opens up to 60. Can you read it like a fifth grader? 30 is less than 60. Check out this, and it's going to be on page 166 of your book as well. Because the temperature is shown on a thermometer. A thermometer is just another type of number line. This time it is vertical instead of horizontal. And they're talking about the difference between Celsius. That's the way every other country other than the United States reads its temperature, and Fahrenheit, which is what the U.S. uses. So if you take a look here, water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, but up here in the good old U.S. of A, we still call it 32 degrees Fahrenheit. They are exactly the same temperature. Or if you're talking about room temperature, meaning about what temperature is it in this room right now, Generally, about 68 degrees or 20 degrees Celsius. So the thing you have to realize, if you drive up in a Canada and you see a thermometer, they're measuring their temperature in Celsius. We measure ours using a different grade called Fahrenheit. So we might run into some problems like this. At 6 a.m., the temperature was 21 degrees Celsius. The temperature shows the noon temperature, and this is an awful hard line to read, so I left it on. The noon temperature is 32 degrees. How many degrees did the temperature increase? So it started off on about 21. You can barely even see that and it ended up at 32, they're talking about how much did it increase? One tick mark. That sounds like a subtraction problem to me. So if I'm starting at 32 and put my big number on top, and 21 
was the starting temperature. How much did it increase? It increased by 11 degrees Celsius. Okay, not too tough. Let's keep moving on. On the Celsius scale, what temperature is 5 degrees less than the freezing point of water? Did you forget it already? Where does water freeze on the Celsius scale? Do you remember? Water freezes at zero. So, okay, what temperature is five degrees less? I want to go down five degrees and I'm starting at zero. This is where our knowledge of negative numbers comes in. Negative five degrees Celsius. Here it's asking us to draw a horizontal number line from zero to 500 with only zeros and hundreds marked. So start off with a horizontal number line, right? And then we better go and put in some numbers. I always hit like starting at the end and at the beginning. So from zero to 500. This one's especially tricky because 250 would be right in the middle. So I'm going to go right about here and write in my 300. And I know I have to get 100 and 200 in there. And the last one, am I done? I better get one more in there for 400. We've had quite a bit of experience writing in number lines, so I'm not too worried about that one. And that is the end. Make sure you have your book readily available because they're probably going to ask you some temperature problems and you can find the information you need on page 166 of your book. As always, you probably want a scratch piece of paper and a pencil for the Socratic quiz. And good luck.